Hello, my name is Brad Balliot, and I am a bassoon player and composer. And I was an Ensemble Connect Fellow in 2008 and 9. And these days I teach bassoon at the Peabody Institute of Music in Baltimore. And I play in orchestras and chamber music, and I write a lot of music, especially music for bassoon. When I approach writing a piece for my instrument, the bassoon, especially if it's alone, I like to think about the melody first, because the bassoon is really a melody instrument. It can only play one note at a time. And maybe I'm old fashioned, but I love the melodies. So I start there. And I came up with a very, very simple tune, just using the notes of the good old C major scale. And it goes something like this. <laughs> Pretty lovely tune, but very basic, and right now it's just a group of notes. So the question is, what can I as a performer and what can I as a composer do with these notes to kind of turn it into something that really says something about it? Well, I think a tune can do a lot of different things, and maybe it should do a lot of different things in a piece of music. But I like to organize my ideas and sometimes even ask my friends what they think. So I've brought with me my idea box that's full of ideas for things that I could do with this tune. And I figure I can try some out and then maybe that will help me decide what this piece of music should be like. Ooh, this person has requested that the tune be played in an imposing and conquering way. Hmm. Now, as a performer and as a composer, we need to make some choices about how we're going to make this tune sound imposing and conquering. And that's why I have this chart here. So let's take a look. We need to choose a tempo, the speed of the music. If it's going to be imposing and conquering, should I play it slower or fast? Let me think about that word, imposing. I think of something imposing as thoughtful, deliberate, slower moving, not rushing around. Now for articulation, should the notes be long or short? Imposing. Yes, once again, I'd put it somewhere in the middle, on the longer side maybe, because short notes are going to be a little bit too pecky to be really imposing and conquering. I think a loud dynamic will help us feel imposing and conquering and probably something on the lower side because the high notes on the bassoon tend to get a little bit more uh, soft edged and singing and we want something very strong. So here's our conquering and imposing version of the tune. <laughs> Pretty imposing. Now is that, what the, is that what I want the piece to be like? Well, I'm not totally sure yet. I think we should try some other things before we make any final decisions. Let's go back to this idea box. Ooh, somebody has asked for it to be played like a prayer. Hmm. So now I need to make some new decisions as a composer and as a performer. If I'm thinking about playing it prayerfully, I think I'm going to play it on the slower side as if somebody is deep in thought, meditative. As far as long or short notes, I think a little bit on the longer side will work for a prayer, as if one is speaking very slowly. Dynamics. Now, you could pray soft or you could pray loud, but I'm going to imagine this being a quiet prayer. At a certain point, composers and performers just have to make a decision. 
And should the prayerful version of the tune be low or high? I'm going to play up high as if the notes are ascending into the sky. Here's the prayerful version of our tune. Somebody has asked me if I could play this tune as if it was a parade. Now that's going to be a totally different set of compositional choices that we need to make. So let's go back to our chart. How fast should it go? What's the tempo? Well, a parade, parade music, I think of a march, which is on the faster side, but not so, so fast. It's not like they're sprinting down the street. It's a steady march. For articulation, hmm, short or long notes? Well, when I think of a parade, I think of the drums, the snare drum, the bass drum, and you hit those instruments, and the sound is pretty short. It doesn't sustain the way that a wind instrument does. For a dynamic, well, parades are loud when you're standing right next to them, but I also think about when you are standing watching a parade, You'll hear it coming in the distance quite quietly, and then it will get louder and louder. So I'm going to make it go from soft to loud. And the range, well, there's lots of low notes, but there's also lots of high notes in a band that plays a parade, like a, like a marching band. So we will play it at a march speed with short notes, starting quiet and getting loud and using the full range of the bassoon. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we'll keep that for our piece. Maybe that's the perfect setting for this tune. One thing's for sure. After going through a whole lot of ideas, it's helpful, both as a performer and as a composer, to see what all this tune can do and help come to a decision about what the final piece should be like. So after trying so many different ways, I had an idea that I wanted this tune to sound glittering and shimmering like a diamond or an icicle. Is it possible to do that with this tune on the bassoon? Well, I took a try at it, and this is what it sounds like. Thank <laughs> you. 
I am Brad Balliot, a bassoon player and Ensemble Connect member from 2009 and 10, and I want to thank you for spending some time with me today. <laughs> 